What's up guys? So today's video is divided into two parts. The first part, we are going to take a look at the city and what it looked like seven months ago when we started the channel and then we'll compare that to what it looks like today and we'll talk about some of the changes we made. In the second part of the video, we're actually going to do some city planning. So I'm going to go through the different sections of the table and of the city and talk about some of the projects I want to work on in the next year and sort of what the vision and inspiration for each of the different sections is. So let's get started. So this is what the city looked like in the beginning. Some of the key differences are that we had a full ballasted train track around the city. My forest and clothing building were much more integrated into the setup. And overall, there was just a lot less in the city. Uh, the city was a lot less dense and the buildings I was building at the time were just a bit larger. I also had the bike path running down the entire length of the table as well as all the fence and the plants kind of repeating throughout. But I will say probably the biggest and most impactful change we made was just removing the train tracks, which freed up so much more space to build. So now that we've seen the before, let's take a look at what the city looks like now. So obviously a huge, huge difference. Adding the beach was a major upgrade to the layout. It really added some nice color and some texture, and it also just breaks up all the buildings and gives it sort of a more natural feel. Now, finishing the first two pieces of this hill section was huge. I needed to get this area going. It was something I'd wanted to work on since I started the channel. And I think that these two pieces have really good connectivity to the beach and their surrounding area. So really, really excited to keep working on those. Now, looking over at this view corridor, not a ton has changed from the first video, except that the bakery has been rotated and shifted and I've kind of moved some of the walkways around. So now let's take a closer look at the planning stage and talk about what we're gonna be working on in the near future. Right. So let's talk about the hill section in the city. This was an area that I was working on right before I moved the table. We got these two sections done. And now that the table is off the wall, I've had to completely rearrange my ideas about what I want to do with it. Um, I think what I want to do is continue this rock work and get rid of that little brick wall and probably even the steps and then try to continue it into some kind of larger cliff over here, obviously with some buildings on it. And then I'll have to transition this area somehow, I'm not sure, probably put in at least one or two more staircases. Um, and then again, it'll just kind of tie into this elevated section. My goal is to take this six base plate section to BrickCon next year. So I need to build it in a way that it can transport, but I'm really, really excited to get working on it just because getting this first, you know, two out of the six base plates done uh, has really helped get the area just energized and get going on it. So the next area that I wanna talk about sits right here at the top of these stairs and kind of continues back behind this little white building. And initially I wanted to do something a little more flat up here. I think now I wanna continue some elevation because I've been having a lot of fun with that. One thing I think I'd like to continue is this gray staircase. It's one of my favorite elements of the city. And although I think it'd be a little bit like large and maybe oversized for the space, I think that might be okay um, just to have another big continuing like you know staircase coming up top and, and kind of leading into more of a cliff. So I've got some ideas for this area. I'll probably work on something in this section here semi soon, just because now that my build area sits across from you know this side of the uh, city table, this little view corridor is much more important to me now. So I wanna work on something there, but I've got a lot of other areas. So let's talk about this area. This is the one that is probably going to be the last to get worked on just because I don't have a clear vision of what I want to do here. I think I'd like to keep some element of this elevated section just because it's kind of a neat little spine running through the table, but I expect that I'll probably get rid of most of this elevated section right now just because until I have an idea for it, I don't want it to you know persuade me or kind of make me visualize one thing when I could have something else. I also would love to get a lot of these pillars back. So we'll see what happens in this area. I know I'd love to do something like Tuscan wine country and I've thought about that for this back side, but I'm just not sure if that's gonna work. So we'll see what happens in this section. All right, so now let's talk about this back area of the city. This is an area that I have never really contemplated what I wanted to do just because the space felt so far away from where I used to sit, which is where that little display space is. So one of the things I think I'd like to do eventually in the city is build a really good sized kind of replica of Portofino. And I think it would work really well to go on the width of this side of the table so that it would kind of span all the way there and do something with like a harbor and obviously all the, you know, the greenery and the trees. Uh, I think would just look really nice. So it's something that I have to plan out because it'd be a pretty large build. So 
I think that, that it will also really transition nicely into what I'm planning for this section of the table, which as I mentioned a few minutes ago, is a lot more important to me now that I sit pretty much right here with this view. So let's talk about what we're gonna do here, which will then kind of transition into this sort of Portofino Harbor-esque area. Now, because I had so much fun doing the rock work over on the first part of the hill section, and I was really struggling with what kind of buildings to put right here, and just with this edge of the table, it's kind of tough to figure out what I wanted to put. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up going back and revisiting this sort of plaza area and starting some elevation, which will then lead into some really nice rock work and kind of a big cliff. And then I'll have a little bit of water down here. And then obviously on top of the cliff will be some kind of buildings and you know different little colorful houses and things like that. So I'm actually in the process of ordering parts for that right now. So I'm really, really excited for it. It'll probably be about a three base plate section and then like I said earlier, I'll have this Portofino section and I think it'll tie in really nicely because I can just kind of keep the cliffs going. So really, really excited to work on that and also just expand my landscape skills. It's something I haven't really done a lot of, so really looking forward to that. Now there's two other ways that I approach my city planning. And the first is that I take a certain region or a certain area of Italy that I you know, wanna draw inspiration from and I kind of assign that region or that area to a certain section of my town. So there's a couple different areas. The first hill section is really much more like Amalfi Coast, Positano, Capri. The far end of the table is gonna be, like I said, more Portofino. So think, you know, large harbor, a little bit more cliffs, a little bit more greenery. And then we've got the midsection of the city and that's gonna be a little bit more like Tuscan wine country, Montalcino, a little bit of San Gimignano with like some, you know, tall towers and some castle walls and things like that. And then I've kind of got this side section that sits right next to me here on the on the city table. And I want it to be a mix of, I think like Cinque Terre, a little bit of Lerici, and I think it'll blend into Portofino. And so it'll be a little bit of like coastal colorful beach town meets hillside cliffs and kind of transitions into a much bigger build. Um, so that's one of the first things that I do when I'm thinking about my city and kind of what inspiration I want to draw for a certain section. So then the second way that I approach my city planning is a little bit more abstract and also just start writing down ideas of things that I want to include somewhere. I don't have a plan for it. I don't know where it's going to go. So for example, there's a couple big projects I want to tackle. One of which is I want to build a hotel. And this is something that I want to do full interiors for. I want to fully, you know, detail it out with minifigures and all little storytelling, even lots of interior lights, you know, and furniture and make it really intentional and do a really cool cliffside pool with some nice tiling. And so that's a big project I want to work on. I may put that here kind of to my left just so I can see it. Um, another one that I really want to do is a big section of rock work that I can actually remove Move, and I want it to have some kind of like little secret hidden compartment in it. I think that would be really, really fun. And then there's other projects that I just need to do. And so I want to challenge myself to find a fun way to incorporate them into the city. So the first thing is I need to redo my lighting. Uh, I haven't bought lights for the last probably two months just because I was overwhelmed with it and the wiring and I just didn't want to deal with it and the cost. Um, so eventually I'm gonna go back and rewire the whole city. I'll probably drill a hole in the table and actually run power you know, into the table. So those are some of the projects that I want to accomplish in the city. There's a ton more, you know, there's all kinds of different things from just doing more textured walls and things that are more part intensive and using some new techniques. I have a bunch of different nets that I want to use for some landscaping and some water. Um, and I really just want to start to use more of my part collection. Uh, I'm kind of redoing all my storage right now. And so it's been really fun to see all these parts that I kind of forgot about and going through old, you know, half built mocks and breaking them down and pulling those parts back in the collection. So that's really helped in my city planning too, is just getting another good sense of what I have and also rearranging the storage. That is something that I like to try to do periodically just because it helps you see new things. And I think it really helps when you start to tackle a large project like designing a Lego city and designing all these different areas and modules, uh, you really gotta know what you're working with. But there is so much more that I wanna do in this Lego room this upcoming year. And this is where I could really use your guys' input because there's a lot of different things I wanna do in the channel and in the city and, and just different projects. But I would love to know what your guys' favorite kind of content to consume on YouTube that's Lego related, you know, what that is. I know most people that the answer is probably city updates. Uh, and that's something I wanna get back to in this year and just get more consistent with our updates because I know it's been a little bit hit and miss. 
Um, but would love to know what you guys think. I love doing things like tutorials and mock overviews and just doing detailed walkthroughs of you know different building techniques and, and breaking things down. But let me know what you guys think. I definitely have been really, really enjoying the last seven months of putting content on YouTube and I've been doing it on Instagram for a little bit longer, but I did wanna say I really appreciate every single person out there who subscribed or liked a video or left a comment. For you, it's probably a quick, you know, mindless action, but for me on the other side, you know, on the creator side, it's really gratifying and really rewarding. It still blows me away that there's people out there who wanna to listen to me talk about Lego and watch me build. So. It's, it's really awesome, I really appreciate it. So let me know down in the comments what you guys wanna see in the coming year and we'll see you next time.